This is a Pinball News Production. So Andy, can you tell us a little bit about what you're showing here at the UK Pinball Party? Hi Martin, and welcome to uh, all uh, Pinball News viewers. Um, what we have here now is the latest version of our prototype, and this is actually a playable game now. When we went and uh, showed the public in Berlin, it was just a playable, uh, playable whitewood, essentially, with um, some artwork. But now what we have is we have a rule set programmed in there, we have light displays, we have sound cores, we have voices, we have sound effects, and we, we have a playable rule set, as I say. So it's not entirely um, on the money just yet. We've still got a few modifications that we need to do. We've got about another four to six weeks of development to really fine-tune the rule set. But what, you, what we see now is a playable version of our game. Now, what we've also been doing in the meantime is we have um, an all-new cabinet design. Um, we haven't got this in time for the show now, but within the next two weeks, we've got our new prototype cabinet being made, an all-new design, which Pinball News uh, viewers are going to be able to see um, on the site shortly. Um, we also have an all-new artwork package as well, and this sort of leads me into one of our big announcements um, as to somebody who's just joined um, Highway Pinball, an absolute legend in pinball art design, uh, the legendary Doug Watson, who has the, um, done artwork packages like the Translight for High Speed to the Getaway, Indiana Jones, a Demolition Man. Well, Doug has now joined the Highway Pinball team and has uh, stepped in to do um, our, the latest version of our artwork, which you see now. Now, we decided from customer feedback that the original art package for the, the Translight and Side Decal panels wasn't strong enough. So we have reacted to that, and we brought Doug on board. So, you know, Doug, it's not exactly the way Doug wants it at the moment. Doug wants to spend some more time before we get into production, but the basics of it are there. We really wanted to sort of show the whole, the speed, the, the racing elements of it, the high risk, the adrenaline, the big occasion with the grandstands, and we believe that um, Doug has managed to capture that. Um, but Doug is going to be doing some more development work on that before we get to production. That all sounds very exciting, but I understand that Doug's uh, not the only new member of the Highway Pinball team. No, absolutely. It gives me great pleasure to uh, announce that we have a, an absolute pinball design legend who's now gone and joined Highway Pinball, and it's none other than Dennis Nordman. So what's Dennis going to be doing for Highway Pinball? Well, Dennis is already now in the early stages of design for one of our next games. Um, it leads me on to say that we uh, have two games at um, quite a good stage of development already, which will be games number two and three, and both of those will be licensed themes. And Dennis is um, designing one of those two licensed games. We had the news a while ago that John Trudeau had joined Stern Pinball, and yet he was designing a game for you too. So what's happening with that? Well, John um, was um, brought on board to design one game for us, so we had a contract to design one game, and that's exactly what John has done. So John has, um, has prepared um, the, the game up to the point where we're ready to develop that as a Whitewood as well. Now, that's not one of our first three games. Um, John's first game, or John's game with us, is um, scheduled for a, a late 2014 release date. So we are developing that at the moment, but we're concentrating on games two and three. But we're expecting John's game to be at the Whitewood stage sometime around Christmas time. OK, so let's return to Full Throttle that you're showing here today. And the game looks very attractive with all the multicolour LEDs. Uh, what is it that people are seeing in the game here today that will be in the final game? And what is yet to be developed? Well, what they're seeing really is um, a kind of a facsimile of what the finished version will be as far as the lighting sequences and everything go. But what we've done is we've done things a little bit differently with the development of our game in that we developed all of our rule sets separately on a virtual platform. So we originally, we put the white wood together, we made sure we got all the shot geometry correct, and then we developed all of the rules separately on a virtual platform, and then it's migrating all of those rules onto the finished version. What you see now, it's about a 40% migration of those rules. So we know exactly what the rules are, we know how, the whole, how it plays, and it's very slick, um, but what you see now at the moment is about 40% of where it's going to be. But as I say, we've got about four to six week development cycle now remaining to have um, the rule set complete as to where we want it to be. So when do you think you'll be in a position to take the game into production? Well, at the moment, um, we're scheduling the end of October. Uh, one of the big things we're doing at the moment is regarding our sort of mechanism design. We've got a lot of unique mechanisms, because all of our mechanisms are modular, so they're designed to, um, to be able to drop in and out of the playfield very quickly for ease of serviceability. And so we're, we're developing that aspect of it at the moment. So the mechanisms that are on full throttle at the moment, the prototype, are not um, the ones that are going to be on the finished version, although they will still play in the same way. 
Uh, so we're looking to start production at the end of October, and around the sort of early October, we're going to be building up our production line facilities and then sort of getting stock in from suppliers as we reach sort of middle of October, with a view to then start doing some very small runs at the end of October and then start cranking up production then as we move forward from there. And finally, one of the first things players will see is a skill shop. Can you tell us something about that? Yes, it's a, quite a, we really love this feature. Um, basically, what the player does is there's a, there's a skill shot and a super skill shot feature at the start of the game. Um, you see the revs there, and the revs, you hear the engine of the, of the motorbike revving, and the revs are down at zero. Then with the left flipper um, button, you actually adjust the revs. And it's quite difficult because the revs go up between sort, of re, um, between sort of green, amber, and red. And what the player needs to do is catch the revs in the amber section. And throughout these colour modes, all of the playfield colours are changing as well. And the, 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 the sounds of the bikes are changing too. And if you catch it in the amber zone and with the start button, then you get the skill shot award. And at that point, then if you've got the skill shot award, you need to make the right ramp with the left flipper as the ball returns to the left flipper. And if you manage to do that, then you have the super skill shot. Thank you.